All right, we are going to review the key ideas of 7.4, which was quadratic functions in standard form. Uh, you might want to look at those lessons if you aren't understanding what these key ideas are meaning, uh, because we're going to go pretty quickly over the big key ideas. So here's what we learned. Uh, we learned in black here that the factored form of a quadratic function is y is equal to a times x plus r times x plus s. And it has the following characteristics. So these are things that you should be able to, properties that you should understand without a graphing calculator. Uh, the x-intercepts of the graph are at x is equal to the opposite of r and x is equal to the opposite of s. So for example, if I had a function y is equal to <clears throat> uh, 2 times x plus 1 times x minus 5, you would look at the values r and s and know that the x-intercepts are the opposite of those. So you would have x-intercepts of negative 1 and positive 5. Okay. Next, the y-intercept of the graph is always a times r times s. That's in red here. Or you could substitute x equals 0 into the function because y-intercepts always occur when x is equal to 0. So totally up to you. Uh, let's use the same example here. So if we had the function y is equal to 2 times x plus 1 times x minus 5, uh, let me go ahead and substitute x equals 0 into the function. So that would be y is equal to 2 times 0 plus 1 times 0 minus 5, which simplifies to y is equal to 2 times 1 times negative 5, and that will give you a y-intercept of negative 10, because those values multiply to negative 10. So there's another property. Uh, third property is that the equation of the axis of symmetry is x is equal to the x-coordinate of the vertex, which doesn't help you that much uh, just from that description. But in other words, what you want to do is if you look back in your 7.1 notes, the axis of symmetry, uh, it is in the middle of the x-intercepts. So using symmetry, if you have the x-intercepts, the axis of symmetry will be right in the middle of those x-intercepts. Uh, number four, if you'd like to determine the coordinates of the vertex, uh, what you would do is substitute the value of x at the axis of symmetry, since the vertex always falls on the axis of symmetry. Uh, you could substitute the value of x at the axis of symmetry into the function and solve for y. Then you would have the coordinates. Uh, next key idea is what we just did in the previous lesson, is how do we determine the function in factored form that defines a parabola from information? Well, you have to know the values of a, of r, and of s. Okay, and there's a reason why I've used red and green separately separately. Uh, first of all, the x-intercepts, this is the easier of the two parts, the x-intercepts always give you the values for r and s. Remember that they're the opposite of the x-intercepts. Uh, <clears throat> and some other point, so substitute this point for x and y. So you can use any other point that's on that parabola, any other information other than the x-intercepts, uh, and substitute that point in for x and y to determine the coefficient a. Okay. And finally, some helpful hints. If your function does not look like y is equal to a times x plus r times x plus s, if it doesn't look like standard form, there are ways to get around that. So what you'll notice in, that, in this next question so helpful hints for difficult quadratic functions in factored form. Uh, represent functions like f of x is equal to 2 times x times x minus 2. You'll notice there's not two sets of brackets, but what you could do is represent this x here as x plus 0. So what I mean by that is this. You could represent it as y is equal to 2. And then that x that's highlighted in yellow, you could re rewrite as x plus 0 and x minus 2. And that looks more like factored form. Uh, another one you could look at here is this function here, represent functions like f of x is equal to negative x plus 3 squared. This squared actually means that that factor happens twice. So you could rewrite it like this. It's negative x plus 3 times another x plus 3. And that looks more like the standard form y is equal to a times x plus r times x plus s. And there's some helpful hints.